Okay, so welcome everyone to another uh, building a car tips and tricks video. For this I wanted to do a tutorial showing how I use Modo in my design process. After I export uh, the model from Gravity Sketch, uh, I bring it into Modo and use the topology tool to create nice clean geometry that I can manipulate to refine the surfaces and uh, the design of the vehicle. Uh, so when you export from Gravity Sketch, uh, you'll have a zip file here. All you have to do is unzip the folder and it will give you this folder here with a thumbnail, your OBJ file, and a material tag. Uh, after that you just need to uh, export the OBJ into uh, Modo or 3D Studio Max, Maya, uh, Lightwave, Cinema 4D, whatever uh, polygon modeling tool you want. A lot of the um, future kind of tools I'll be using in here should be transferable to most subdivision modeling software. Um, some of the stuff that I know is specific to this is this topology tab which I'll be using uh, initially to create new geometry as well as some of these falloff tools uh, which I'll get into in a second here. Uh, so next it will import uh, your data. Uh, I'm working Z up I think the models usually come in Y up. Uh, traditionally, uh, I work in Z up uh, because Alias is Z up, and eventually I might bring this into Alias, and it saves me from having to rotate and and scale models later on. Uh, and also, most real-world product design um, kind of objects are usually built in Z up. Uh, so I just scaled the model and rotated it into position, um, and I scaled it to about four and a half meters uh, long. I just wanted to get it approximately the same size as this backplate image of this Lotus Evora. It's pretty similar um, size and promotion vehicle that I want to go with for this car. Um, after that I usually kind of start morphing the model a little bit. You can see this roof line uh, and maybe this rocker are a bit lower than this actual vehicle. Uh, you can keep that wherever you want, but for this I'm going to make it a little more realistic. So I'm going to use the linear falloff tool, um, which is really great because uh, it will only affect certain parts of the model. So you can see here when I drag that out, um, it's really going to affect this top area the most and less down at the bottom. You can see where this tapers. Uh, so that's pretty good for uh, keeping some of these elements here along this line uh, where they are and then just moving the top of the roof so you can see how that works and then you can drag this and affect more of the model or less it's pretty good uh, now depending on the density of your mesh this will and your computer hardware this might uh, be a little taxing but my computer is not too bad so I think that should be pretty good for that and then I'm just going to reverse it and pull up the rocker height so it matches a little bit more the bottom of that car. You can see it's a little bit off it's not completely uh, straight there but I can fix that later. Uh, so that's that. You can see also these wheels got a little out of round. Um, for that demo I was just doing that quickly but I've made uh, another model that keeps those round. I just uh, kept them separate before I did the morphing tool. I also did a little bit of work to the fenders there. You can see they're not quite around the wheels but this is just going to be a rough model so I'm not too worried about it right now. <clears throat> so mainly for this tutorial I'm going to be working in the topology tab here. Uh, for this to work you need an empty mesh object here. That's where I'm going to be creating my new geometry. Um, I'm just going to change some of these settings here to the inactive. I, I don't like it being in the, the shiny shader so I'm just going to use shaded and no wireframe uh, so that's just changing the inactive mesh, that's the one, the underlying mesh here that I'll be creating new geometry on top of. 
So inside this new geometry or this new mesh object, uh, I'm just going to start out with the pen tool, and you just click, click four times, and that will create a polygon. And then from here, uh, the topology pen is the tool I use the most. You can see when you grab the geometry, it sticks to the underlying mesh there. And this will work on the faces, points, and the edges. So from here, I'm just going to start dragging it out. I'm just going to do a quick little area here to show how the, how the tool works and then I'll do a time lapse of the rest of the car. So shift left click will start drawing out uh, from one edge and then shift right click will pull out multiple uh, faces off of uh, multiple edges there. Uh, so that's good so uh, that's good for kind of creating big areas and then you can come in and use the add loop tool to add more subdivisions as you feel necessary. <clears throat> so you can see that's there. Uh, this underlying surface isn't the greatest, so I'm probably just going to use it roughly and form a new surface that kind of fits these sections a little better. So depending how rough you make the underlying surfaces, uh, your new topology will be a little, uh, will can be more accurate or cleaner. Uh, depending on how accurate you make those surfaces in Gravity Sketch. But for this, uh, rough is okay. Uh, another tool I use a lot is, uh, again, is that fall off tool. So usually, uh, to get kind of nice wheel arches here, I will start. Yeah, you can see actually uh, Z up in Modo kind of changes actually the, uh, the way the cameras are like front is actually the side and back is the side uh, but that's just something I have to deal with I just know that back is the side that I want there uh, so I'm gonna come out of the topology tab just to show you how I, how I start the side view I'll just make a cylinder there that's I just hit control and clicked and that gives you a standard cylinder and then I'll just rotate it 90 degrees uh, I deselected that face and I'm deleting the rest of the polygons and I'll just drag this out and scale it and move it into position here let's see that's about right there and then I will bevel the face and that will give me and delete the middle and that will give me oops yep, delete that and that will give me a nice ring for the wheel arch and then I'll just come in and actually delete these bottom ones here I'll move that up just a little bit more I think that will be good <clears throat> and here I'm just kind of eyeballing and making a rough wheel arch. Uh, you can be as accurate as you want. Uh, then I'm going to use the linear fall off and scale these out just a little bit. But I'm going to change the shape of it to ease out so it kind of uncurls them a little bit there. And then I will scale them back in just to kind of straighten that out and we'll just do that that looks pretty good and right now it's completely flat uh, these wheel arches are never flat at all uh, usually in the front they start to tuck under the vehicle as well as here on the rear side of it uh, and then depending what the rocker does um, that will change shape so I'll come through here when I'm modeling and, and change this entire fender transition down into the rocker there uh, but one way I like to get a nice curved uh, kind of uh, roll tuck under for this wheel arch is use the fall off tool again drag it out and pull it in and then you can kind of manipulate the shape of it after um, for the 
now I think I'll just leave it like that um, and then you can copy and paste that and drag it to the rear obviously these wheel arches are not in the right position actually that image is a little crooked I think um, so I'm just going to I'll just leave that the way it is and drag that out a little but I'm going to flatten this out actually again uh, just because I'll probably have a different uh, curvature here for the rocker and this rear bumper when I start to build the fenders and transition into the rest of the body there okay so that's pretty much uh, those are pretty much the tools I'm going to be using right now so the next video will be the time-lapse which I will link to in the description uh, followed by some uh, some of the modeling tools that I use to manipulate the geometry